Hey everybody, this is Mr. Sawbladehead and I am at the new Weld.com lab. So as you can see, we've got a sign out here and it's, you know, it's going to be basic, but inside we're going to do something really cool on this next project. So come with me. We decided to use some of the materials we had around the shop and we do have some of this diamond plate aluminum here, sheet of aluminum, and I'm going to do some sort of cool banding and uh, cut out and the globe and either get a print or if I have to, I'll go ahead and, and uh, hand paint that. All right, so as you can see, we got the sign cut out. Now the next part of the process is I have to figure out what kind of framework I want to do. Um, it's framework doesn't have anything to do with the mounting points. That's all going to be in the back, but this is for how I want to make this an impactful statement. So once again, using some materials around the shop here, I uh, was originally going to go with some, some rectangle type of tubing to kind of give it a bolder statement. Um, to me, it, it seems kind of generic, even though this is a simple kind of a sign. So I decided to go with one inch angle and you might be thinking, okay, well, if it's kind of the same thing, you're going to go with angle. But the trick is, is actually, I like to, I'm going to put it flat so you're actually, it's what's pointing outward. The reason being, it gives it a different look, a different texture, and also accentuates the lines here on these sharp, on the font here itself is a very sharp font. So putting the angle like that makes your eyes want to, it pops everything on out. So that's the look that I'm going to go for, for the sign. It is going to have a three inch, um, thickness. So we're going to cut out strips of diamond plate. So it's going to actually give us a three inch depth for our wall. And the next part, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the globe here out of some, out of some scrap sheet metal, but I'm not going to do it out of the CNC because it, you know, it has to have a more contour shape. It's not just a regular circle. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to be manually cutting that on out. And we just got in the new Lincoln Tomahawk and I'm super excited to go ahead and try this on out. So let me go ahead and draw this out and we're going to go ahead and fire this puppy up. I'm going to cut it on out and make the top and the bottom and may, might make some other cool little things out of this thing. So let's go, uh, let's hit the shop. I got my carbon steel one eighth inch thick um, machine set about 90, 95 PSI at about 17 amps. I did some preliminary cuts just to check it. And at that setting, it cuts like butter. So right now I'm actually all set on up and we're going to go ahead and cut this globe out. So I've drawn out the curvature of the globe, actually cutting this freehand and I'll uh, shape it up a little bit. Uh, with the standard of smooth out if there's any imperfections that I uh, that I may have. I'm going to try to go as smoothly as possible, especially when you're doing kind of like long curves. I wouldn't go slow because the slower you go, then you start to kind of wobble. So you try to go at a, at a decent pace. Um, the other thing too is a little bit different than when you're actually welding. I like to go to a, a lower setting, not quite, not quite a grindy, grinder setting. I go to about a six. So I actually get to see a little bit more of where I'm cutting at. I have soapstone on there, which actually helps a lot when you're actually doing uh, plasma cutting. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's, hopefully I won't screw this up so much. Now always make sure you're aware of your surroundings of where your hose is. One reason why I like to try to keep my hose on top is just because, you know, God forbid if you have it tucked underneath and you're cutting, you wind up cutting through your hose. So it's even good to actually do some practice runs, get it set on up and just get a feel for it. Because you might be going and all of a sudden you're kind of caught on something. So if that's the case, then make sure you can get it wrapped up where you need to go. Just make sure you're not going to get tangled. When it comes to oxyfuel welding and cutting, Thermacut has you covered with a full line of accessories and consumables, not to mention their own line of cutting torches. The Extra Flame Oxyfuel Cutting Torch from Thermacut comes in two versions that work with all kinds of fuel. And just like with all Thermacut parts, their superior design makes them efficient and easy to use. And when it comes to consumable, the savings add up while you get the same quality you expect from OEM. Whether it's Harris, Victor, Messer, Esab, Quickie, or the rest, Thermocut makes a part that keeps you welding while keeping your money in your pockets. All right, so this portion of the sign, the globe is made out of carbon steel. So what, I'm not gonna go ahead and reinvent the wheel as far as hanging these things. So all I did was take some, some scrap quarter inch rod and 
I made some little U joints right here and I'm gonna be welding this onto the north and the south pole of the globe. And I did put a bevel in because what I'm gonna be doing in these position points, the reason why I beveled it is that I don't want it obviously flat. It's gonna be sticking out roughly about half inch to five eighths. Just real simple like painting hangers is what this is gonna be. All righty, so I'm gonna go start on the sign. This is actually the steel portion of it. So I'm gonna be using the, the Lincoln Aspect 375. I'm gonna be using the straight polarity I'm going to be a hilly arc in this TIG, carbon steel. I'm using the foot switch on 2T, and I'm pushing about 70 amps. So, let's get to it. All right, so now we actually have the sign all cut out. We got our end caps and everything cut out, and we're actually gonna go ahead and start tacking this all up. We're just using aluminum square tubing to go ahead and clamp so we have a square edge here. And we're just gonna mimic this for each side until it's all done, and then we have something special for the front as well. So let's do this. Today I'm using the Lincoln Super Glaze 4043 with a 330 second diameter AWS spec of A5.10. All right, so the sign just pushes in a little bit um, just due to the flexibility of how thin this material is. So all I'm gonna do, I've got some uh, two by quarter inch aluminum. I'm actually gonna, just gonna make a plate where it's just going to be just basically it's an extra brace to actually keep everything nice and flat for the outside of the look um, so it's not bowing at all and just real simple just going to go ahead and tack it onto the outer framework here help push that down reinforce it and we're good to go all right so now is the trim work we are wrapping up on the sign cutting this on the vertical here so everything we're going to be cutting with is all for aluminum products so we have our aluminum blade here on evolution when doing any sanding polishing is going to be once again aluminum disc any other fine-tuned cutting once again four and a half inch aluminum as well I, I, I do want to give a shout out to como i didn't even know what this company was i happened to have pick out some of these hats while i was here and i've been been using them ever since and then luckily they came on as a partner and i just really want to give a good shout out like i said i loved your product even before i who knew who the company was so i guess that's saying a lot so let's get to cutting Always a good tip, even though whatever miter saw that you have, it's always a good thing to go ahead and, and square it on up. Sometimes if you go by the reading where it says a 45 or whatever degree you're actually cutting, it's always a good reason to always double check it because if it's slightly, if it's out a degree or so and you start putting stuff together, things are going to get all wobbly or if they do well, go ahead and fill some stuff on in. But if you're looking for those really precise cuts, always make sure go ahead and square it on up on the outer as well is also on the inner when you bring your saw down and check it for square for whatever degree that you're going with. Let's move on. All right, now this is a, a simple technique. I'm sure a lot of you probably already know about it, but one thing that I like to do when you're actually uh, polishing or sanding uh, metal, but you want a different look than that typical brush look. I call it kind of a, it's a satin or a muted look. Um, so what I did is obviously I used, you know, the wire flap wheel on this portion of that, but then I take a wire wheel and hit it lightly and I get this type of, rough satiny type of texture to it. So as you can see, the two different types of look you can get with it. So a little more polished brush look, or even a, a more of a muted satin look as well. Well, 
finally done. It is signed. Actually, it didn't take all that long. It took about less than a week between all the stuff we got going on. I really appreciate Paul. Paul helped me out immensely on this as, well as, as a fitter, as well as uh, helped me with the welding. Uh, Ken, as well as cutting out the CNC to make this thing happen. Um, the graphic didn't come on out the way we wanted, so I wound up, as you can see in the video, that I wound up just painting this. And like I said, very inexpensive build. I mean, luckily we had the materials lying around and you know, this is stuff that you guys can uh, do on your own, regardless if you have a CNC machine or not. But there is one very cool thing. It's the final touch. It's this. And there you have it. New sign from the newwell.com location. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody's comments and questions. If you do have more comments and more questions, please go to our forum or well.com and connect with us directly, well.com forward slash forum. Now, if you want to check out exclusive content and member perks, join our channel and support the well.com community. Sawblade Head out.